Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel again. This is the second video in the IRAP series. In the previous video, I have provided an overview of IRAP assessment, what role ISM CCM plays in the overall IRAP assessment process. In today's video, I'll be providing more information on what exactly ISM CCM is. ISM CCM stands for Information Security Manual Cloud Control Matrix. Let's dive deep and understand what exactly is ISM CCM. ISM CCM is nothing but an Excel sheet with security controls advised by Australian Signal of Directorates. These security controls has been divided into various categories and has been mapped to security classifications such as official, official sensitive, protected, secret, and top secret. ISM CCM also has mapping to essential eight maturity level, which is also another uh, information security compliance standard advised by Australian government. Let's look at the ISM CCM control matrix. Here uh, we can see different guidelines, which are actually the categories, and these are 22 in number. Today in this video, I'll be covering few of those, and in the next video, I'll be covering the rest of the categories. However, here we can see um, the mapping which I was talking about earlier. Um, o means official or official sensitive. Number of technical controls for both official and official sensitive are same. So it's indicated by just one column here, O. And then uh, protected, secret, top secret, mat essential at maturity level 2 and maturity level 3. So basically, these are the columns which can be used to map these controls and as per the requirement of your organization or the IRAP assessment which you are targeting for, whether it's for official protected secret or top secret, uh, these controls can be filtered and uh, statement of applicability, which is actually the scope in which these controls can be referred. Now that we know how ISM CCM matrix looks like, and let's talk about implementation advice now. I have taken a few categories uh, from ISM CCM sheet, which I'll be covering in today's video, and the rest of the categories will be covered in the next video. Um, the first category is guidelines for cybersecurity roles. ISM CCM basically talks about two roles, CISO and system owners. CISO stands for Chief Information Security Officer. An organization must have a CISO, and CISO should be aware about overall cybersecurity posture of the organization. Cybersecurity posture can be gauged via security assessments, audits, and compliance. CISO should implement cybersecurity program to keep track of security risk applicable to that specific organization. CISO should run a cyber steering committee periodically to make a strategic decision to keep a risk under the appetite of that organization. CISO must be across the cyber incident response plan. CISO is responsible for yearly cybersecurity budget so that CISO must plan it uh, carefully so that different activities throughout the year can be supported. These can be various projects, internal assessments, and so on. The second cybersecurity role which ISM CCM talks about is the system owners. In our, in our organization, we all have different systems. So each of the system must have a system owner assigned. And this is the responsibility of a system owner to ensure that their specific system is gone through various security risk assessment processes, security control implementation, risk has been identified, mitigation plan for the, for the, risk, for the identified risks. Systems are integrated with VM, patching, logging and monitoring, various uh, security governance and compliance practices. So all these activities, system owner need to ensure that they are happening. I have collected next two categories considering they talk about same thing, which is guidelines for communication infrastructure and communication systems. ISPs, telephone, telephone systems, video conferencing, and fax machines. These are basically the highlights of, of both of these categories. And the gist is just to ensure that only authorized personnel are using such services, because then otherwise these services can become the beacon of data exfiltration and data breach. So organization need to ensure that there is a policy around it. Logging and monitoring must be always configured, and only authorized um, personnel are allowed to use these services. Also, I will stress upon the uh, security risk assessment, which an organization carries on different in, in, uh, internet service providers before consuming their services, which also feeds back to the overall risk which any, which any organization is standing on. The next category is guideline for cryptography. Uh, th these are again, um, I see them as a uh, security best practices, even though they are part of ISM CCM matrix. These, uh, these um, security controls under, under this category talks about encryption at rest, encryption in transit, key management process, how an organization is managing their secrets and keys, um, ensure, um, make sure that um, all the cryptographic algorithms are be which are being used are advised by Australian Signal of Directorates. What is the TLS encryption being used? TLS 1.2, I'm assuming all, all, all the organizations are using at this point in time. TLS 1.3 is on the horizon. Some of the cloud service providers, they're already using it. And then in the next few years, I'm assuming that it will be TLS 1.3. 
um, security controls for SSH tunnel if an organization has tunnel set up with a cloud service, provi uh, with a cloud service provider or, or um, B2B or B2C connections. So ensure that the security controls advised under guidelines for cryptography has been referred as part of setting up these SSH tunnels and uh, um, IP as part of the SSH tunnel configuration controls as well. The next category is guidelines for cybersecurity incidents. Every organization must have cybersecurity incident response plan. Logging and monitoring must be configured and in place, has been tested thoroughly. Um, post identifying a malicious activity, alert should be fired automatically. And then later on, uh, triaging that alert, investigating that alert, and taking action appropriately, whether it was a false positive or an actual security incident, and reporting the, uh, reporting, reporting the cybersecurity incidents to the um, authority as per the law. The next category is guidelines for data transfer. An, organi an organization must have a policy for data transfer, whether it's a data import or export. Certain security checks must be carried out just to ensure malicious data doesn't get import in inadvertently inside the organization. And the data which is going outside of the organization, it's going only um, to the authorized personnel who are expecting this specific data. The next category is guidelines for database systems. Logical segregation must be placed among various instances of database, such as dev, test, and prod. There must be IAM policies implemented just to ensure only right people can access right development, production, or the test and database instance. Principle of least privileges must be implemented. Logging and monitoring must be enabled. Encryption, data in, whether it's a data in transit or data at rest, it must be enabled as per the algorithms, cyber, uh, cryptography algorithms advised by Australian Signal of Directorate. Data validation, sanitization checks must be carried out in both directions, whether it, if the data is going out, just to ensure it's going to the right people, and if the data is coming inside the organization, just to ensure before it gets used in the production database, is it must be scanned for any malicious input. The next category is guidelines for emails. ISM CCM has detailed security controls on email users policy. Emails should be marked as per the security classifications an organization is targeting for. Email gateway security must be thoroughly looked at. Email must be encrypted. Suspicious emails must be blocked by email gateways. Um, uh, phishing emails reporting functionality should be available in the email technology an organization is using. And then data loss prevention must be enabled just to ensure that inadvert inadvertently data doesn't get um, leaked outside of the organization. The next category is guidelines for enterprise mobility. ISM CCM uh, explains or advise the security controls pertaining to the mobile device management policies, uh, whatever technology an or, or an organization is using, they need to ensure that proper authentication and authorization has been implemented uh, within that tool. And then to ensure that at all times CIA triad has been maintained, which means confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the data. The next guideline is um, for security controls for the gateways. Gateways are the network nodes, which allows multiple networks to communicate with each other. They help in setting up DMZ zone to separate devices and services from getting exposed to public network. ISM CCM um, sheet advise security controls pertaining to proper authorization of the data, logging and monitoring of those gateways. And there are uh, a lot of controls pertaining to content filtering, just to ensure that uh, the data which is being traversed uh, through the organization, that it's free from any malicious input. So content filtering must be in place uh, along the gateways. Well, that's all I have in this video. And in the last video of this IRF series, I'll be covering the rest of the security controls of ISM CCF sheet. Thank you for watching the video.